And now, once again, Richard Thomas. You've probably heard this saying, it's not the gift, it's the thought that counts, or big gifts come in small packages. Well, sometimes a gift can be as small as a kind word and a reassuring gesture. In the case of our next story, the gift of love and understanding was also as big as a miracle. In the name of the Father, and of the Son. In the winter of 1976, Robin Jansen began attending a new church in Ottawa, Illinois, where she immediately caught the eye of associate pastor Rick Shope. I noticed this young lady coming into the church, sitting towards the back, very good looking. Has given us the strength. Rick caught to Robin's on. eye as well. In he was very handsome. And I just thought, oh well, I don't have a chance and name, I'm not going to go up and talk to him first. I'm just going to sit back and just wait and see. Excuse me. Yes. And I had a couple of my spies in the church find out who she was. Oh, that's Robin. You haven't met Robin before? No, no, I haven't. There were other girls in the church. There were some girls that liked me, but I was not drawn towards them. That concludes our ceremony for today. Robin we'll soon became a regular parishioner, but continued to hide her feelings from the young minister. I would hang around the pews after church, hoping that he'd stop by and say a few words to me. Go in peace. Although I was very, very attracted to him and felt that I was falling in love with him, I had no idea how he felt about me. When I got up my courage, Hi, Robin. I asked her if she would like to go out with me. Good. Are you going to go to the fellowship meeting? Yeah, I was heading there just now. And we were going to go to a religious activity. So we had a sort of formal, informal first date, but it was still church related. But Robin was hesitant to pursue a relationship. Her mother was battling terminal cancer, and Robin was spending more and more time with her. My mother lived in Delavan, Wisconsin, and many times I would leave Illinois and just drive the 100 miles to be with her, help take care of her, and we became very, very close. It's time for you to go. She was very ill. It was very hard for me to see her going downhill with the cancer. Robin was a devoted daughter, willing to sacrifice her own happiness in order to make her mother's life more comfortable. I'm fine, thank you. Concluding our service today, we remember the good days. And then one Sunday, her mother felt well enough to make the 100-mile trip to Robin's church. And Rick preached, and mother seemed to enjoy his sermon very much. And she said, oh my, he certainly preaches well for someone so young. Rick, I'd like you to meet my mother. Oh, that was an inspiring sermon. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you very I told Rick at the time that my mother was very sick with cancer. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, I will pray for you. Oh, that, that would mean a lot to me. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Unfortunately, her mother's condition took a sudden turn for the worse, and she required full-time care. Finally, I made up my mind that I was just going to quit my job and move back to Wisconsin to take care of her. With her decision to move, Rick and Robin's budding relationship was coming to an end. Rick was just the type of person that I had always hoped and prayed for, but my mother needed me, and she came first. No matter what I felt for Rick, it just couldn't be. And I went home as quickly as I could. When Robin arrived home, she found that her mother was dying. I'll let you go, Mom. You've always been there for me. And my first broken heart. And when I didn't get chosen for the school play. And all the stories I would tell you, and you'd always listen. How can I not talk to you every day? Robin, it's time for me to go. Don't hold me here. No, it's going to be all right. And she put her arms around me and kissed me and told me that everything was going to be all right and that everything was going to turn out all right for me. I'll just wait to see. I felt like in her death, she comforted me. It was Robin's last conversation with her mother. She had no way of knowing how prophetic their final words would be. That same night, 
Rick was alone praying when a man entered the church and approached him. Excuse me. Yes. I couldn't help but notice you being deep in prayer. You're trying to make a decision about a girl, whether you should marry her or not. You've met her. You will live a long and happy life together. God bless you. It was a situation he could know nothing about. Bless you. I had never met the man before, nor have I seen him since. But I knew that Robin was the answer to my prayer. I was pleased, I was thankful, and in a sense excited too, and then nervous too. Rick soon learned the tragic news of Robin's mother's death. Oh, I'm so happy that I got you. I have some sad news. Robin's mother passed away. Two days later in Wisconsin, after her mother's funeral, Robin sat alone, consumed by her loss. What now for me, God? I didn't know how I was going to manage without my very best friend, without my mom. I felt devastated. And all of a sudden, Rick came and sat down beside me. Hi. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you. Didn't you know I would come? No. And he held out his hand, and he said, Will you marry me? <laughs> what? And I went from <laughs> devastation to utter ecstasy in just a few seconds. I will. <laughs> and there was such a release of emotions that I just couldn't help but start to laugh and cry for happiness and laugh and cry. And everything. <laughs> My mother had a wonderful laugh. She always saw the bright and sunny side of everything. And I know that she was laughing and rejoicing along with me. Six weeks later, on June 28, 1977, Robin and Rick became man and wife. The two recently celebrated their 22nd wedding anniversary. They have two children. I believe our marriage is a miracle. I believe that I was born for her, she was born for me. And there were two other people who played their part in bringing the young couple together. It's going to be all right for you. Robin's mother, who assured her on her deathbed that everything would be all right, and 100 miles away, a stranger Excuse who delivered me. Rick a mysterious message. I couldn't help but notice you being deep in prayer. He just looked at me and said, you have been praying concerning a wife. Whether you should marry her or not. I met him only that night, and it was divine intervention. You will live a long and happy life together. It was a confirmation of my prayer, what I'd been praying for. I'm so happy to see you. And two I days later, Robin's prayers were answered as well. Will you marry me? I will. Only God could have put everything together like that. Only God could take away the sorrow and pour in the joy. Mother had always taken care of me so well all my life. And this was her last gift to me. So happy. This was her last time taking care of me here on Earth. <laughs>